What are your best examples of people cheating the system? I'll start. I work in a typical office building, but today I saw something interesting. Lazy co-worker number 11 has been leaving around lunchtime to go to the gym. Except I had to get something out of my car, and I saw her, in her workout clothes, eating out of a tub of fried chicken. I didn't say anything, but she walked back in 15 minutes later saying how sore she would be tomorrow. She works out every day. My boss has a policy, that if you're going to work out, you don't have to clock out, which means lazy co-worker number 11 essentially gets paid to eat fried chicken in a jogging suit in her minivan. As annoyed as I am. I'm also slightly impressed that she thought of this. So I work in the luggage claim department for a major airline. All day I get to hear customers yelling and complaining. What I did is borrow one of the wheelchairs from the airport and sit behind my desk all day long. Customers come in all angry, see me in the wheelchair, realize they are about to yell at a guy who is possibly crippled, and all of a sudden they turn into the nicest people. Physically my blood pressure has dropped. And in general I'm in a pretty good mood most of the time. My boss will often check the date modified on certain files on our server, to see if I have updated or even opened a certain file recently. So, I have installed a change a utility that allows me to modify the date modified on any file. This comes in most handy when my boss wants to give me weekend assignments. I just come in on Monday morning and change the date modified to Saturday night and he thinks I was actually doing something for work on Saturday night. I've actually received a lot of kudos for this. I don't feel bad though, because my boss is a huge donkhead. This is one of the best ones here. That's gaming the system, but without stealing or whatever else so many of the others have. This is in the spirit of the tracksuit slash bucket of chicken lady. My wife and I were at a super fancy restaurant in New York City. Reservations not allowed expect to wait we get there and are told we would be waiting about two hours no problem we planned on this some guy right after us shook the reservation guy's hand handing him two hundred dollars next thing i know i hear table for two for thomas thomas being my name and i asked for a table of two i say that is me they sit us and we order drinks and apps five minutes later they say we are the wrong thomas but we could stay since we had already ordered. Guess who was the right Thomas? The guy who paid $200 to skip the line. I was flying last month, and the plane I was on had Wi-Fi. There was a free 15 minute trial, and then you could purchase a chunk of time. I just kept deleting the cookies on my phone, refreshing, and logging back in. I stayed online for over an hour for free. You're a menace to society. I used LimeWire to download LimeWire Pro. Every time someone posts this, I find myself grinning and nodding my head. I thought I was a ducking genius when I did it. I knew someone who would hold one religious ceremony in his house every year, so that it could be considered a place of worship and he didn't have to pay taxes. When I was in college, I had this meal planned where the school essentially took my actual money and turned it into campus dollars. That could only be spent at school dining halls and cafes. I didn't mind so much until the end of the semester, when I was informed that any unspent campus dollars would go away. I had more than a hundred bucks left, and only a day to spend them. Here's what I did. I went to the nicest campus restaurant, the one where you're supposed to take your parents when they come to visit. Basically, a real restaurant with wait staff, that also happened to take campus dollars. I got the most expensive thing on the menu, and then called the waiter over. I asked him if I could tip him in campus dollars, and he said yes. I asked him if he would have immediate access to those campus dollars, in the form of actual money, and he said yes. So I made him a deal. I gave him a monster tip, and he gave me half of it back in actual money. Many years later, I am still proud of this. I made a service day, screwed the man and got my money back. Whenever people come to the pool where I lifeguard and have guests with them, I always ask them if they live more than 50 miles away. Our policy is guests from more than 50 miles away don't pay guest fees. If they say no, I give them the look and ask them again. They usually say yes after that. Saving customers $2 like a boss. 
I bring all my rechargeable items, shaver, cell phone, laptop, etc., to work and plug them in there. I figure I must have saved at least $1 to $2 last year in electricity. The college I commuted to didn't have enough parking for the commuters, but roughly 10 times what it needed for the residents. One day I was forced to park in the resident parking and got a ticket. Every day I had to park there right slip the ticket under my windshield wiper and walk on into class. The cars around me would get tickets, but they'd just leave the old one on my windshield figuring they already got me. Never even paid it. Worcester State did a horrible job of enforcing parking fines 10 years ago. I did this at my school. I put the ticket under my windshield, and for the first time or so it worked. Then I started getting tickets again. One day I sat outside, when I parked legally, and watched the parking guys do their thing. Turns out they mark the tires of the newly ticketed with chalk. It's genius, really. Who looks at their tires? So then I noted the rotation of colors they used and bought my own chalk. I can afford college thanks to bigotry. I have two moms, and thanks to the law, my non-birth mom is technically not my legal parent. So when I applied for the FAFSA, I could legally say that I was raised by a single mother who works part-time. Financial aid's even sweeter when it feels like you're getting revenge for living with people's BS. Lady friend of mine born in Cape Town. Immigrated to USA at 2. African American on all standardized testing and college applications. White as the Yeti. It's a typical one, but still gold. Edit, for non-Americans, in the USA, many colleges all own slash grants give added weight to people of minority status, intended to make up for institutional racism, in a process called affirmative action. She is white. But she claimed a minority status through a technicality, and is recorded as such on the census, opening doors intended for visible minorities to her that would otherwise not be open. At the arcade, if you pull the ticket out real slow and careful, you can get an extra one. Boom. I lived in a trailer park next to a Chuck E. Cheese, and before they got the shredders, they just threw out the old tickets in trash bags. I'd wait until the shift changed the next day, and split the tickets with my friends. Great system. Old lady, 80s, at my college bookstore, walked in the back with a bag, placed two books in her bag, and then I watched her walk to the front as she sold them back to the bookstore. I wanted to say something, but was too impressed. I'm not surprised. Some of the most audacious douchebaggery I've seen in my life was done by old ladies. If you are a woman over about 55, you are invisible. You are non-threatening, unassuming, and trustworthy. You are grammar. You can get away with things you wouldn't believe. I used to work in a camera store that's old warranties. No matter how the camera broke, they would fix it or replace it under the warranty. The only problem was that the store would ship off the camera to be repaired, sometimes for months, up to five times before replacing it. So. Let's say your battery cover breaks off. You ship it off, and six weeks later it's back. But, it's really a brand defect, so, the cover pops off again. They won't replace the whole piece or give you another camera. You're out the camera four months while it's being fixed. They keep selling the defective camera in the warranties. I got tired of ducking over customers. I thought it was dishonest. I read the contract myself and found an interesting clause. If the camera was so physically damaged that it was obvious it couldn't be fixed, we could take a picture of it and send that instead. The person immediately got a new camera. When people would come in with a camera with a defect I'd seen 100 times, I'd ask if they just wanted a new one, the next model up, without the defect. They'd say yes, and I'd tell them to take it out into the parking lot and run over it with their car. I'd pile the pieces on the counter, take a picture, and give them their new, non-defective camera. I slept fine. A teacher I had in high school always said to his students, if you can get away with cheating, go for it. Turns out he had gotten a raise for getting his master's degree, but never actually got the degree. This went on for over 10 years before the school system figured it out. Somehow he got hired at a new school too. At my university, I would always order delivery from a late night eatery and get a ride home with the delivery guy. 
less expensive than a taxi, with a meal included. Papa John's offers an unadvertised, maybe unofficial, deal where pizzas that were ordered but never picked up, are sold for $5 just before closing. Size and toppings doesn't affect the $5 price, so, my friends and I used to order family sized meat lovers pizzas, and up to pay at pick up but never show up. We would wait till closing, pop our heads in, and ask if there were any leftover pizzas on the rack for sale, thus, getting our huge pizzas for $5. I'm from Northern Ireland, and when ordering stuff online I'd always write Belfast Ireland on it instead of NI, the post will still get there, as yes, technically Belfast's in Ireland. The post would be directed via the Dublin sorting office instead of coming into the UK routes. 9 times out of 10, the Dublin sorting office would just send it on up to Belfast, instead of forwarding it to Royal Mail in London who would then slap a huge import bill on it, whereas the Southern Irish Postal Service can't charge me import, as I'm a UK citizen. The Republic of Ireland couldn't give a duck if the Queen's out of pocket over a few quid. My granddad was a Royal Mail postman for years. He taught me that one, edit, for anyone who's confused, if you live in Northern Ireland, which is part of the UK, you have to pay UK import tax on stuff you buy from outside the EU. If you write Ireland as your address instead of NI, the parcel will be sent to the Republic of Ireland, different country, same island, who usually forward straight to you instead of sending it back to the UK so you can get charged. It's a sneaky way of avoiding import tax. Back in high school, I discovered that if you call any question slash comments number on a food product, you could make up literally anything and get a coupon for a free whatever it was. So for instance, we'd call Bisquick Pancake Mix and say we bought a jar of mix, but inside we found three already made pancakes, shit like that, just nonsensical stuff. We did it so much that we'd pile up the coupons, go to the grocery store, and check out a full cart of groceries and just hand the cashier a stack of these coupons, and not pay a cent for hundreds of dollars worth of groceries. We did that multiple times, and eventually the big companies, Kraft, General Mills, etc., catch on, and you have to use different names and addresses. I'll never forget the exasperation of the poor person on the other end of the line, when I told them the chicken patties I bought just get more frozen every time I put them in the microwave. The kids are outside playing hockey with the ducking thing right now, this is BS. In the good old days of Black Friday, before stores like Best Buy started getting very crafty, and clandestine with their deals, 8 plus years ago, there used to be a slight buffer where someone would leak the sales, and the items wouldn't be removed from the shelves. I don't remember specifically, but they had a system to prevent you from purchasing, then price matching retroactively. As soon as this happened, I strolled on down to Best Buy, took a bunch of stuff that I wanted, and put it in their dryers and washing machines. Basically whatever hiding place that didn't look like it got a lot of browsing or consideration. Then when Black Friday comes, sleep in, head to the store around noon, and pull the door busters out of a washing machine. Here is a Canadian one. Being Canadian it's even ethical. Wait outside a superstore gas station and watch for users that leave the receipt. On the end of each left receipt is a super buck. 20 minutes and you can collect enough for lunch. Saw a bum doing this. Thought it was pretty creative. My favorite homeless entrepreneur asked people for their tickets when they left a nearby paid parking lot early, and sold them for 50 cents each. There's a guy in downtown Ottawa who does something similar. He helps you park your car, stopping traffic and directing you, as it's a bit of a pain to park in these spots. Then, when you go to pay, he, correctly, informs you that you don't need to pay, as it's past 5.30pm, when the meter's shut off. He then asks if you have some spare change. I almost never give anything to the homeless downtown, and yet he's gotten cash from me on more than one occasion. I used to be a member of New York Sports Club. It is a semi-expensive gym here. At the time, if you forgot your ID card, you could just tell the person behind the desk your number. I always forgot. After a while I noticed I was transposing two numbers in my ID, and they were still letting me in. I cancelled my membership and had free all-access gym membership for three years. Ha. Huh. 
old job gave us smoke breaks, but no 15 minute breaks for non-smokers. I explained this was BS to my boss, he didn't get it. So I took up smoking again. I'd take 15 minutes every shift to stand behind the building with a lit cigarette, puff it once, and then call my girlfriend on the phone. I actually know someone that started smoking for this reason. She had never smoked before. They knew who smoked and who didn't, and restricted those extra 15 minute smoke breaks to real smokers. Now she's addicted. If you want to cancel your cell phone contract without paying a fee, pull up the provider's service map. Find a huge hole in the map, like a desert out west. Look for a town name in that map. Tell them you're moving to put Zacha T. Walker, Arizona, and you want to cancel because they don't provide service there. Boom. Three times now. Three times. A guy in my neighborhood owned a piece of land where buildings had been planned to be built. After his wife died, eerie coincidence, yes, he turned it into a graveyard with only her grave in it, so the government couldn't take the land. When I was a, precociously computer savvy, 10-11 year old, I found a website that parents could set up as a reward system for children doing chores. The parent would set up an account listing several chores, and assign them point values. The child, after completing these chores, could then use the points to buy various items offered on the website. There was, somehow, no charge for any of the stuff. So, I created two email accounts, two passwords on the site, and set up a really generous reward system, where I got tons of points for doing imaginary chores. I used this to buy a shitload of Pokemon cards. That I then played with my grandpa, because I didn't actually have any friends. Ninja Reddit, if anyone remembers anything about this website, I actually tried to find it again years later and couldn't, probably due to the terrible unsustainable business model, please share. This website was set up by your grandfather who needed an excuse to play Pokemon. It was a long con. When I went on a cruise, when we stopped in Mexico and drove through a small town, I noticed every single building had these metal poles sticking through the roof along where the walls on the first floor were. I asked a local guy why this was, and he said it was because if you kept them there, they didn't have to pay taxes for it, seeing as it was still under construction. The first rule of stealing, is you don't talk about it ever with anyone no matter how anonymous you think you are. I must steal this rule. I bought a wireless network adapter for my Xbox off eBay that was broken. I paid like $8 for it. I bought a new one at Walmart for like 40 Returned the broken one to the store. Yeah, that was stealing. Shouldn't have done that. TIL, if you want easy karma, write about ripping off Walmart and say they are evil. I do this thing where you buy the ticket for one movie, and then nonchalantly walk into the theaters for other movies within the theater after the first movie finishes. I believe the technical term for this is, movie hopping. Back in high school, I would buy massive quantities of arcade tokens from the manufacturers off of eBay. I was getting about $10 worth of tokens for each $1 spent. I was there one afternoon. When some kid went up to the counter and pointed out that the token machine was giving out tokens from some other arcade. The owner was more than upset, and I knew it was time to find a new arcade. Using Best Buy warranties to get a new iPhone every time a new model comes out. Isn't that just pure fraud? We just bought a laptop, and the 2 year warranty was over $200, which I thought was insane. And the salesman said, yes. Well it covers complete replacement even if it is your fault. I said, well, shouldn't I just break it just under 2 years and bring it back for a new one? He said, that's what I do. Take a big glass of coke and pour it over the keyboard while your computer is on, making sure you fry the motherboard. Otherwise, they'll just replace parts, this way you'll get a whole new laptop. My coworker would leave at 4pm to go to the bathroom. Leaving the office light on, his chair at an angle, and the computer on, no power save. He would disappear until 9am the next morning. Boss never figured it out. In Norway, almost every store have a 3 weeks free return policy. So when I had a movie project at school, I bought a camera for about $700, only to return it when I was finished. Edit, another story, but not me. 
I saw some guys at a pizza restaurant in Norway, Dolly Dimples. They ordered a pizza, ate it leaving one piece. Then they went to the counter telling them it was a hair on that piece, and they got a new pizza. This actually disgusted me. No one will probably see this, because there are so many comments. But here it goes. This may not be as much about beating the system, as it is about being a persistent enough pain in the ass to get what I had worked for. For length's sake, pertinent details only, a professor in my second college refused to grant me the credits for work I'd done in my previous school. Long story. She was supposed to, but because she was a big wig of sorts, no one challenged her in my behalf. My diploma was withheld on graduation day. The secretary smugly told me that Dean was too busy to speak with me, and that I was out of luck. Now, I knew he was always on the office phone attached to the fax, so I took advantage of that. I went home, found all my original papers, 70 or 80-ish, and the moment his line went free, I began faxing the papers. One after the other, an ever-ducking ending stream of documents. After sending the 40th or so paper, my mom's phone rang picked it up, and the secretary was almost in a panic. She said I was tying up the line, the dean approved my papers, and he said, can you just please stop, and come get your diploma? Which I did. On my graduation day, 